We're going to, as I've already discussed this morning, I'm not a coding or building expert, but uh, now we're going to focus on the anterior elements. So we divided this course, as, you, as you've seen this morning, from the posterior elements to the intraspinal with spinal cord stimulation uh, and a therapy that works for lumbar stenosis um, and other sources of pain, and then the anterior elements, so the discs and the vertebrae. And this is really an area of coding and billing that has gone through uh, a bit of treachery <laughs> over the last 20 years, um, but it's really important we start to engage in it. So um, as you've just seen here from, from Doug, he, he's uh, shown you a couple, uh, or I've shown you one therapy, but also went over a lecture on the different therapies that exist out there. And you know, discography, provocative discography has been done for, for quite a long time, as I mentioned, some of the concerns about risks and how much uh, prognostic information was provided led to a reduction and elimination of coverage in many markets. So even though the CPT code there exists with discography, where I practice, it's pretty much impossible to get uh, an insurance company to cover it and reimburse. So if I were to do it, it is, a, is an out-of-pocket expense for patients, which is unfortunate because there is diagnostic utility. As we just discussed, you have situations where you have multiple discs, uh, or you want to watch the contrast flow, as Doug alluded to, for some of these therapies to ensure there isn't posterior extra extravasation. Uh, there is utility in this, in this particular uh, test. So hopefully, uh, in the future, if it becomes embedded as a diagnostic tool towards a therapy, then we might see it revived. Um, but a lot of these therapies have actually just completely shied away to get out of the weeds in it. So for example, with BVN ablation, they do not include it as a diagnostic criterion. With the, the via disc, uh, intradiscal allograft supplementation, uh, I shouldn't have used the brand name, I should have just described it, excuse me, uh, they do not require the functional anesthetic discogram first. It, 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 you use history, history, physical, and imaging to get to that. Um, but I, as I said, I think this is something that could come back if a therapy was bold enough to say this is what's required. And as Doug said, there is definitely a lot of clinical utility with it. Uh, I briefly alluded to IDET, which, which unfortunately was removed from the market. Um, because I do think in the right patient population, there is a role for it. Uh, but it just wasn't, and there were some complications. There's, there's really no coverage for this at this time. Uh, the corollary to this now is biaculoplasty, which I, I did prior to these therapies you've learned here this morning. So five years ago, six years ago, seven years ago, I was doing cooled radiofrequency ablation in the discs, uh, bipedicular, or excuse me, uh, bi-needle approach, uh, not bipedicular, um, two-needle approach from both sides with a bipolar lesion uh, through the two needles. Uh, but that was an out-of-pocket expense as well because of the, the lack of coverage for this particular CPT code. And then nucleoplasty, this was not something I ever did, but again, uh, no coverage as of late. Um, that sort of went away. And now you do have a CAT3 code, 0627T, uh, for intradiscal allograft supplementation, uh, which Doug did highlight. And we do have one trial, which Doug highlighted, that's completed, published, which did show improvement. And we're now going to see some of the outcomes from our current study regarding radiologic changes and, of course, functional uh, changes as well. So these are, these are basically the codes. Uh, your geography, depending on where you practice, may cover discography. So I know there are parts of the country that do. So I talk to my colleagues in uh, parts of, like I said, and they say, oh yeah, we do it. And I get coverage from certain payers. That's great. Um, but like I said, for me in Northern California, there isn't a, partic there isn't a, s a single payer that will cover that. Uh, CMS does cover 06270 as long as you meet uh, the criteria. Uh, if there's any concern about it, a letter of medical necessity can substantiate it. Uh, if, the, if you're worried about loss of reimbursement, an advanced beneficiary notice is always useful uh, so that the patient uh, will, will pay out of pocket if the payer does not pay. So those are some techniques you can use if you want to protect yourself and, and ensure that you do get reimbursement. Any questions about coding for the intervertebral discs? So I'll shift to the therapy I, I described, which was basic vertebral nerve radiofrequency ablation. This is coded up perfectly, as you've heard. Um, so you do have two CPT codes, 64628, for corresponding to one disc. So that's two vertebral bodies. And then each ad additional disc level uh, is a 64629. 
Um, it does have its own ICD-10 M54.51, which is vertebrogenic pain. As I already mentioned, CMS has been covering since January 1st, and we're seeing the other commercial payers following suit. This is fairly straightforward. Are there any questions about this particular code in the reimbursement? All right, and then last but certainly not least, we didn't talk much about kyphoplasty, but again, but again this is an anterior element uh, code. It's gone through uh, huge swings and changes over the last years as far as not coverage, but really uh, the amount of reimbursement. There have been some studies that have been somewhat negative, uh, and now more recently, some, some stronger studies showing increased safety, uh, reduction in adjacent level disease with, with certain uh, next generation implants. Um, so this is the CPT code. There are many different ICD-10s for whether age-related osteoporosis or trauma-related uh, vertebral compression fracture. Uh, and then sacroplasty uh, has kind of, it's, it's somewhat uh, on, the, on the fringe of coding. Uh, you do have two T codes uh, to describe it. Um, you can also use the percutaneous uh, infiltration of uh, cement without augmentation code, which is 22511. So the 2251315 are with augmentation, so using a balloon or an implant to jack open. I won't say the name of the company or the, the therapy, um, but those would be those codes. And then if you do not augment, um, 22510 and 11 would correspond. We didn't talk about these therapies today. Um, it's certainly something we can do in the future. Um, there are, I think, a couple of companies out there that uh, do these therapies. It'd be good to, to talk to them if you're not doing it already. Any questions? Comments? Anything from the Zoom chat? Looks like Dr. David stepped out. Brian, do you have something to add? Or? No. no. Oh, okay. Thank you. And as he's doing so, um, we're going to have lunch in just a few minutes, and that's going to be non-CME. Uh, and since we're going to begin our non-CME portion uh, starting the second, uh, it gives me the opportunity to talk about uh, after this course at, at 4 o'clock, uh, one of the sponsors, Abbott, is going to be hosting a happy hour to discuss spinal cord stimulation, DRG stimulation, and radiofrequency ablation, and some of the things that they're doing that's novel. Uh, it's going to be at a restaurant that's just three blocks away. It's called Migoto. It's a Japanese restaurant. Uh, and that'll go till 6 p.m. Uh, we encourage you to come early. I'll be giving a, a brief uh, lecture about some of the therapies and, and some of the improvements in the basic science. Uh, and then we'll have some fun. Anything else? Nada? Zip? Great. All right, guys. Well, thank you for uh, participating in this morning's course. Uh, have lunch, provided in the fishbowl over there. Then we'll get into some of the more surgical discussions. Dr. Shawner is going to come up, and Dr. Beal will discuss more things. And then we'll get you hands-on starting at 1.